Good evening and welcome to the daily Rambam Shir, three chapters per day, lesson 167 and 168, Hilchois Midimon Musofim, from chapter Vov on Tiliud, and Hilchois Psulei Hamukdoshin, the first chapter. As everybody knows, the central theme of Shmini Atzeres is what God Almighty says, Koshe Olai Pridaschem, that is hard for me to be separated from you. Unfortunately, this year, this expression took a very horrific meaning as well by actual events that are taking place in Israel right now, which brings us back to a Farbrengen that the Rebbe was having exactly 50 years ago, three days after the Yom Kippur War. And he opened up the Fabrengen with a question, how is it possible to make a Fabrengen right now at the times when Jews are being given in a Milchome, in a state of war? And the Rebbe connected it with the fact that those Fabrengen was associated with the the old site of the Rebbe Maharash, which his central famous teaching was Lechatchile river. A person needs to go over the regular type of boundaries, not only as an escape when all other resources are gone, but Lechatchile to begin with, he needs to take the leap, to take the jump. Lechatchile river comes to expression that we are in such days that Tachnun is not being said, and you would think that there are so many things that are being accomplished via Tachnun. And the fact that these are days that without Tachnun, you're accomplishing those things that generally you gotta say, the Tachnun, the confession, and so on, which implies that since these are the days of Zman Simcho Seinu. And Simcho has a character that is Puiretz Kol Hagdorim, able to break all those type of boundaries. And there are boundaries, and at that time it was terrifying and painful boundaries. But since God Almighty demands from us, despite all challenges, to be in the a state of Simchom, so by bringing in and following this instruction, it will definitely going to bring in that the Simcho would come about in a very revealed way. So in those days when the natural respond is obviously a scream ad Mosai until when we will be suffering from that type of golus, Admosai Roshoimi Aloizu, Admosai, we are in such pains and expressing our condolences to the families of the Kedoshim and Refu Shleimo to all those people who are injured and praise and request from God Almighty that all the captives who both Sio and Berino will dedicate this shiur in the schus, in the merit of those three hopes that would be fulfilled in Heiro Beyomeinu Mamesh. The summary of lesson 167 deals where the Rambam goes into details the daily schedule that used to take place in the temple where the first activity was the preparation of Minchas Chavitin, was the daily uh, flower offering that the Kohen used to bring, the Kohen God used to bring daily. Immediately, right after it, they were organizing the lottery for the rest of the services of the day, starting from Trumas Hadeshen, the removal of the ashes from the temple, the organization of the lumbers, the preparation and taking out the utensils which will be needed throughout the day, the 
providing the Tomid with the drinks in order for the Shechito to be easier and smoother, the cleaning of the Menoiro. Some of those services they used to take simultaneously. For example, the cleaning of the Mizbeach was done while the Tomid, while the daily offering of the Tomid used to be slaughtered. After the slaughtering, there was the zriko, the sprinkling of the blood, and the preparation of the five weeks that used to be in the menoyo. As we have learned before, that the preparation of the menoyo used to take in two stages. Initially, it was five candles, and then the other two candles. The Korban Tomid, given the fact that it was oilo and it was burned entirely on the Mizbeach, they initially used to bring him a volume, a volume, parts, and they were placing it on the Kevesh, on the ramp. Normal days they used to do it on the west side of the ramp, but then in those days where they had Musaf, the extra korban, like holidays, Shabbosim and Rosh Chodesh, they used to place it on the east side. Rosh Chodesh only, they were placing it between one corner and another corner, exclusively on Rosh Chodesh, in order to publicize that this is Rosh Chodesh. In order for the korban not to slip from the kevesh, they used to spread salt upon the ramp, though that generally salt will be considered a chatzitze between their feet and the ramp, it was not a problem since the hoiloche, the bringing the a volume, the parts of the animal towards the top of the Mizbeach was not considered an avoido. So for that reason, the chatzitzo is a problem on, only in a context of avoido, but since it was not an avoido, the fact that salt was spread on the rampage was not a, on the ramp, it was not a problem. At that stage exactly, they were organizing a prayer which reflects a summary of our prayers since it contained only the blessing of Ahavas Oilom, the Ten Commandments, Shema Vehoyoim Shomoya Vayoimer, Emes Veyatsiv, and then the blessing of Retzei and Sim Sholoim. So out of a prayer of 19 blessings that we are reciting daily today, they were having only two and uh, obviously, the entire Psuke de Zimro and even Birko's Yitzel was chopped. So um, then the Mishmor Hayoitze, the Mishmor is the group that were serving at that particular week and they were finishing their job and they were greeting the coming group, Kramig Mishmo, they used to bless them with the following blessing. Whoever placed his name in this house will bring amongst you peace and unity. At this point, they were organizing the additional lotteries that they were tied to the Ktoires, to the incense offering and the Dishon Amenoiro. After it, they used to take a magrefo, it is a metal type of utensils that were used as a sort of a bell, they were producing, by throwing it on the floor, it produced such a sound, which was an alert for the Kohanim, Levim, Israelim, for their services and for their musical accompanying the Korban. And at that time, they were actually taking those organs which were initially placed upon the ramp, they were bringing it on top of the Mizbeach. They were making the Birkas Kohanim with the Shemam Foyrosh. 
and taking the flower offering of the Chavitin and pouring the wine daily, which used to be done by in accompanying of the sounds of the trumpets of the Kohanim, which were standing on the table where all the fets were organized. The daily song of the Levim were basically the same song that is incorporated in our prayers and we are reciting daily each and every day of the week another psalm of the healing of the healing. So whatever we say on Sunday, today is Sunday and this is the song that the Levim used to sing in Beis Amikdosh were actually done then by them when the wine was poured. When Shabbos occurred, so a cycle of six weeks used to take place where the parts of Hazinu were divided into six sections and they were starting again and the end of the cycle started a new cycle. Shabbos, before they were pouring the second wine with the Musafim, they used to bring the Levoinum and the second chapter of this lesson, the Rambam covers the Musafim, the additional Kobanes, which they used to bring in Shabbosim or Shchoidesh holidays. Basically, the core type of offerings used to contain two bowls, one ram and one goat. But then, uh, and seven sheep. But then they used to have additional or exclusive korbonis, which, for example, when it came the second day of Passover, used to be the korban ho'imel. The ho'imel was the bundle of barley, which were accompanying, accompanied with a sheep, which was brought oilo. And here the Rambam describes in detail the preparation and the entire production of the oimel, the harvesting, the cutting that used to be done publicly at the eve of the 16th day of Nisan, despite the fact that sometimes even if it fell on Shabbos, they used to do it with lots of commotion while each and every one who were involved were announcing loudly, is it is that Magal Huze? Is at this particular time of the year? Should I cut? And each and every question was repeated three times, and the entire commotion and ceremony were done in order to make a point that we are ignoring or ruling out from the view of the Tzidukim. Tzidukim were those cold sections that they were denying the authenticity of the oral tradition and they were interpreting the passage in the Torah that commands us to bring the oimel mimocho Shabbos only Shabbos, not in the sense of a holiday, but Shabbos means it should fall only on the day of the week, which means only on a Sunday, regardless when Pesach falls. So the process of harvesting was continued later with separation, sifting um, the grains, which were eventually, after 13 stages of sifting, were producing one isolin only, which we equivalent to about two liters. Each and every type of harvesting is forbidden before the bringing of the oimel offering. The only exclusion where it is permitted 
is to feed your animal, to feed people who are mourning, or for the base medrash. Since the Torah was forbidding as oimel ktsir chem, only your harvesting for your own sake and benefit. However, if this is for the sake of the mitzvah, it will be permitted. The isu, the prohibition of chodosh, to take and to consume from the new harvest is applicable to each and every one until the actual offering was brought on the 16th day of Nisan. The concept of Sfiras HaOimer, the counting of the Omer, was a process that had started from that day of bringing the offering until Shavuos. According to the Maimonides, it is a applicable, applicable commandments regardless whether we have a temple or not, and even Bizman Hazet is mandatory, and like every mitzvah she has man gromo, every mitzvah that is time bound, uh, women will be exempt from this mitzvah. The third chapter of this year, the Rambam expands about the holiday of Shavuos and the special offering which were done was the only offering that were done from Chometz in the Beis Hamikdosh, which were accompanying with two breads and two sheep. But the breads needed to be also from the new harvest, uh, as opposed to the Korban Ho'imel, which were made of barley, this type of offering were made from wheat. After bringing the offering of Shtei Halechem, of those two breads, only then you were able to bring a meal offering, a flower offering in the temple from the new harvest. Lechatchilo. But the Eved, even after the Oimel, it's fine, but Lechatchilo, to begin with, ideally, it should be brought any type of a new harvest as a flower offering only after the Shtei Halechem. By the way, one of the reasons of the dairy product consumption throughout of Shavuos, amongst many other reasonings, that this is also a commemoration of this particular commandments of Shtei Halechem. For example, a small remez, Chadosho Lashem B'Shavu Yiseichem, new offering to God in the Shavuos, is abbreviation of the word Cholov, which is a reference to dairy products that we are consuming on Shavuos. The bread offering that was brought was tied also to the Shalmei Atzeres, to the two ships which used to be brought as a korban, after shaking the Jose and Shoik and the two ships, they used to bring the imuin, the fats, to the Mizbeach, and the flesh were eaten by the Koyhanim. Without the bread, if they have only sheep, but they don't have bread, so they cannot go and bring the sheep. However, without the sheep, you are able to make the Hanofo, the Hanofo is the movement, the shaking of the bread, but due to a rabbinical decree, they were not consumed and they were burned. And the reason is people may be confused for the next year when they will have bread and sheep and they will say, hey, last year we ate the bread alone without the sheep. So in order to avoid such a mistake, they instituted that the consumption of the bread is not going to take place. The 168 lesson covers 
a item which is Miniono de Yoimo. Miniono de Yoimo is from the daily subjects. We are right now exiting a month that was packed with holidays. And as we read in the Torah, especially in the Torah reading portions that we read in the holidays, at a time when there is plethora of many offerings and many services, there is always the dilemma what and how to prioritize when you have two things in front of you. So the general ruling that whatever is more frequent has preference over something that is seldom and it is being referred anything that is more frequent than the other has prioritized. On the other hand, there is another ruling something that is more holy, more sanctified than the others will have precedent. For that reason, if a Kohen meets two items that one of them happens to be more frequent and the other one happened to be more sanctified, so the decision is left in his hand and every decision he will make will be legit. Also, even in a case that he made the wrong decision and instead to choose something that is more often more frequent, he used something that is less frequent with this same level of holiness, he still needs to go ahead and continue the service he has done and only then to go or to bring it as an offering or to slaughter whatever needs to be done. A few examples what is considered more uh, holy than others. When the blood of the chatos is before the blood of the oilo. The reason because the blood of a chatos is able to atone for sins a blood of a oilo cannot. For that reason it implies that it has a higher level of sanctity. On the other hand when there is a meat of a oilo versus fats of a chatos. The meat of a oilo will have more priority, though it is only meat and over there is imurim. Nevertheless, since the oilo, the general korban oilo is kulolo ishim, is being brought entirely, for that reason it sets priority over the others. There is one exception, korbono isachag, the offering of the holiday of Sukkot, I will follow the order that the Torah stated about their offerings. For example, you bring first the bull, then the rams, then the sheep, and only then the goats. Though the goats are considered chatois and they are considered more sanctified than the others, nevertheless, since the Torah stated they should be first, I will honor these commandments. Another example, even in Chatois itself, there is a Chatos of a goat and there is a Chatos of a sheep. The goat will have priority over the sheep since a sheep will be able to atone for all sins besides the sins of Avoid Azore, while a goat will be able to cover also a sin of Aveda Zorah, which were done Beshoigig. When it comes even to Kochim Kalim, like Shlomim, I will prefer and I will prioritize those types of animal that are triggering with them a larger quantity of Nesochim. For example, Poim, bulls, will be before the rams and before the sheep. The reason? Because always a par invites with him a larger amount of the liquids of the yain and the shemen that comes with him. 
In the second chapter, he deals another issue, which is in Yono de Yoimo, all the order of the Korbonois of Sukhois, and most important, the Nisu Hamaim, the pouring of the water, which is associated with what is known Simchas Beis HaShoevo. The pouring used to be done simultaneously when the pouring of the wine, and in order for them to come, to reach, to be emptied out from the jug at the same time, so they made different sizes of holes since the speed of the uh, water coming out is much quicker than the speed of the wine, which is more dense. For that reason, they made a much smaller hole in the jug in order for them to reach the same point in time when they are being emptied out. Since, again, was an issue with the Minim, with the Tzidukim, with those sects that they were ignoring the authenticity of the oral tradition and Nisu Hamaim, though it is not written outright in the text of the Torah, is Aloha Lemoishe Misinai, which were denied by the Tzidukim, so they constantly used to request the person who made the Nisu Hamaim, he should lift his hand and it would be visible to everybody that he is actually pouring the water. Used to be done with the Nisu Hamaim every day, a different passage of Tehillim. I remember when the Rebbe used to share a daily sikho throughout the Simchas Beis HaShoivo, he used to explain each and every day the meaning of that pasuk that they were saying for that particular day. Since water can, at the moment that is placed in a klishoes, in a utensils that were serving in Beis HaMikdosh, so an entire night that went over it, it's called lino, disqualifies the water. For that reason, they used to prepare special utensils that they were not klishores, they were not holy, in order not to disqualify the water in lino. Or they use respectively draw in the morning directly from the kiyor, from the faucet, what which were placed in the um, in the temple itself. In the third chapter of today of the lesson, the Rambam deals with the central items that may disqualify a offering. So first of all, it is very important that though the actual slaughter can be done by someone who is not a Kohen, uh, nevertheless, he must be in a state of Tahao. And though theoretically, even if he has a long knife, he was able to, he should be able to slaughter, nevertheless, uh, it was forbidden to him to slaughter because he may touch the flesh and disqualify the Korban. From after the Shechito, it's from Kabbalah Saddam, from receiving the blood, taking him, sprinkling him, this was a job that was fit only Kuihanim. A intention, a Kavono, to have the right intention, it's very critical, and for that reason, if it's missing, the Korban will be possible, will be disqualified. For that reason, a miner, that his slaughter will be kosher in a case that the animal is not holy, is chulin, in case that a godoil oimed al gabo, someone who is adult standing and watching him, when it comes to kodoshim, anything that is in a context of holy offerings, his slaughter will be possible. The location of the shechito 
of Kodshe Kodoshim, the holiest of holies, was in the north side. Any deviation from the north side will disqualify the Korban. The animal must be entirely inside. If part of the animal is outside the territory of the temple, it disqualifies the Korban. Even if the animal is inside the territory of the temple, but it's not touching the ground, the animal happens to be in the air, it will disqualify the Korban. If the man who slaughters the animal is in the air, so only in Kodshe Kodoshim it will disqualify the Korban. In the mazrek, in the utensils where he's doing the sprinkling, even there is a chatzitzo. So as long as it is from the same mean, from the same type, so it's not going to be choitzetz, even if it's not from the same type, as long as there is an excess in one point or another of the mazrek and the blood, it will be fine. However, the utensils where he makes the kmitzo, the meal offering, any form of chatzitzo between the meal, between the flour and the utensil will disqualify the korban. The animal must be without any defect until the Kabbalah Saddam, until he receives the blood in the utensils. If the animal happens to be after the Shechito, before the Kabbalah, missing a part, the animal or the Korban is not kosher. After that stage, all what is required to remain from a behemo, the kezais. There is another item that will disqualify a korban if the blood will be exiting the territory of the temple. However, if the flesh or the fats will exit the territory of the um, temple, it's not going to disqualify the Korban. Now, when it comes to a state of tumo, contamination, so if it is a public Korban, he should continue to sprinkle the blood. If it is a Korban Yochid, so as long as or the meat or the fat they are around, he should go ahead and continue. If both of them are tome, the flesh and the fats, then he should not sprinkle the blood. However, if he went ahead and sprinkled, the korban is hurzo, the korban was accepted, and that basically was the function of the tzitz, which was part of the garments that the Kohen Gol were wearing, that the ultimate purpose of the tzitz in order to be meratze, to atone, even when the korban was brought in a state of tumor. I want to conclude again with a good year and healthy year and a year of peaceful year, a year of secure year, a year of all the blessings that God Almighty can give and should give to each and every one of us. Shana